Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast. Me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda Hero of Psych, Defender of the Fatherland. We're off here to a one versus one on Arnhem checkpoint between the south. We got Stefan BK fighting for the Soviet Union for the second guards mechanized corps versus in the north. We got Jazz Hans fighting here for the Oberkommando West Germany Deutschland, the Feldherrn Halle Panzergrenadier Division. Both sides finding out here somewhere. And what we imagine is are the plains of Hungary as the Soviet army advances on Budapest. We got a strong point of cool one start here with Fulcher falling out for Jazz Hand, Stephen BK going for double conscript build there with engineers sort of also mixed in, obviously. We've got oh watch fortifications and spare cops with infantry and orbs on there for Jazz Hands versus Stephen BK shock rifle. Got motor and lend lease with infantry and anti tank grenade bulletins there. So both players with the slightly less than used doctrines, but also some of the more utilized ones lately. Fans engaging in the center between the storm pioneers and the engineers. Shots being sort of spread across there with the cool bank just moves for curl chair. So there's a basic basis of the storm pioneer being utilized here for sort of more disruptive opening. That way, trying to sort of throw up Stephen BK here in the opening moments of the game. Not quite succeeding here to get caught by the conscripts out in the open there. Stumpa taking two hits there from the most of the guns. Otter there stumbling over quite dead. And the second conscript there being moved eastwards with the third one on the way there for Stefan BK. Jazz hands going for more infantry in the process as well. So both players sort of uh, going for a bunch again. The only difference against just Jazz hands got a bit of motorization here with the Kubelbargen with an MG34 mounted in the back. Sort of a common mounting they had while in a lot of the sort of lighter motorized vehicles that used to sort of move about infantry and the likes of, for example, early trucks as well, of which they had many. Even German ones, there's sort of numerous ones, I think some of them from Stein and the likes as well, they're sort of all looking a bit different and used for different purposes. That's a fun fact. Country pushing up here against the Sturm Pioneer, flying back with the Sturm Gewehrs, but they're already in such a poor condition, the Jazz Hand should really at this stage just consider pulling them back before it's too late. And there you go, quick retreat there from Jazz Hands. More folks are going up here. We can see that there's already forming a styling ground point in the center of this. Both places just chucking everything in there as they just sort of forget about the rest of the map and the potential of just outrunning their opponents through that instead. So, so far, very classic styling ground setup. Genius versus Cool Dragon in the West, pushing them back. Hunters out there being flanked here by the folks. Gun of these shots flying in at them. It's only quite exposed there. Up here, healing reinforcement, more filters there for Jazz Hands. We got four contracts there for Stefan. Medical supplies up for his John Pioneers to allow them to heal up a bit. Very good there, very good. Of course, it only helps if he actually then grabs it. Contract being pushed back, filters advancing here past the corpses of dead Bolsheviks. And here, Kuban running into a lot of troubles with Contra. They might have to dispatch someone towards the eastern side to cover up. And there you go, Contra actually falling out, exposing himself to more filters than their fire. Might have been a misclick there by Stefan, but it's only costing a few hits there. And we got Lindley's for him, so he's going to go over there for hay machine guns and EC8 standard, or not EC8, but M4Cs, and possibly some half packs, though not very likely. Country standing about in the far east, and we got troops moving towards the west here to support the Kubelwagen. There's more company in towards the center, so his tier falls into fall back soon, having taken quite a beating there from the Russian. There you go, pushing towards the church here, and can Stephen BK get in there in time? Ah, uh, two stuff for some. Is he wide at the entrance off? Yes, indeed he has. I was sort of slightly wondering about that. Doesn't always make sense, but he has wired off the entrance to the church. Just a strip of wire. I sort of see late like that can block most in uh, entrances. Fulton versus Conscripts here, catching that in the open. And looks like ooh, Stephen BK. Both are trying to sort of move about, so a bit of scattered shots. You have to say it's going to come out on top from this one, but there you go. Fulton are taking losses. In the centre here, we can all see that Jazz Hands being out. Manu, we've got Kuban moving down. There's John Pauls rushing into trying to support the Germans left behind in the centre. There you go. Engineers with flame force as well up here. Still pretty close. It's still pretty close. Looks like the Russians are pulling through with this one. Looks like they're pulling through. It was rather close there. Could have been Jazz Hands that won that one. There you go. He is retreating up there. Trotting away for Jazz Hands. John Pauls moving up. Can't be pushed back. Forces are close being rubbed up. We got a on the side like a maximum there briefly, that might have just been me getting shell shocked then sort of uh, a flashback there for less enjoyable moments. Field medics up there for Stefan, no heavy machine guns called in. Nothing at all. Force them each in force and battle group headquarters up for jazz hands, so 
no mechanized regiment, no attempt to sort of support that way, or sort of any aggression, just more infantry support. There might be some like infantry guns, flat calf tracks, and those there for jazz hands. And we got the first aid machine out there for stuff from the first disc car. Still has these been cut down. A negative car while trying to repair, getting a lot of uh, bonuses there to sort of apply to them to make them easier to hit. Since June is overall easy to hit when we're repairing, and Nectar Co only makes that easy. So that was really a bad sort of there for Jazz Hands, and Stefan was able to very promptly and firmly punish him for that. But there you go. Jazz Hands being pushed across the front there, back towards the space, with only a single total squad on the front line able to do anything, and it's far removed from any of the action. And now it's Carl Fawns being threatened here by Stefan Decay. Could have considered those sandbags to make it easy to hold while grabbing it, but in this case, didn't consider it. Cool band there on top. In this case, he didn't have time either. As so the cool band pressured up, we've also got Fultz running in here, catching here the Russian troops as they're focusing the cool and allowing the Fultz to get it on the point. And Rash but you also got the salt wraps up. My dog, I went for the bad with headquarters, but allowed to more faster to get towards it. Cool band goes up in flames. There we got an MG4 on the way for Jazz Hands to help control uh, Russian infantry. Fultz there taking minor losses as they are slowly picked off. And there you go, MG4 out here for Jazz Hands. Shots being exchanged here. Sort of almost done, but the Fultz versus that will be able to last long. The country already there. Got the upper hand versus the Fultz kind of is The only way it could have been worse if he had more trophy. Also got a demo charge here by the fountain. Good spot there since it's more likely to hit for that piece of cover there. It's a very much sure uh, kaboom. Fultz is continuing up the eastern side. And there you go. Almost got the point, but ultimately forced to wait. Jazz answers yet to go for the doctrine. Does he even know there's a disc about? Most likely he does not, and does not fire it yet. But the MG-54 hits should spot it. And in dust, if it doesn't, the heavy thud of the disc should signal to him that there's a heavy machine gun there. And specifically, of course, that should also tell him his opponent has gone for lend least tactics. I mean, very few doctrines has this, and certainly none of the doctrines Stefan Ola's hat would have had this. So a shot rather than got most of the disc up pretty much firmly cements the doctoral choice there for Stefan should of course allow Jazz Hands to sort of make further corrections to his own strategy or tactics in response to this. Nothing further arriving, he's just replenishing troops. No additional infantry, no additional machine guns, no other preparations here versus Stefan, who's going for a support weapon company here. Could be planning field guns or mortars for all we know. Sign backs up to the car point. Also, good pressure in the east. We got Fultz, Christian Pines moving about there. A load of country support being moved up here to sort of stall the fascists, prevent them from getting the fuel point. The assault rifles would be a pretty good choice there for Jazz Hands. Moving down the Sturm Pines. There you go. Quickly routed from taking the eastern point. And there you go. Blind hand gun out off. Should give here with the Sturm Pines. The upper hand versus the guns. Because the line Jazz Hands is secure the eastern fuel point. Even as Stefan is applying light pressure to the western resources, Jazz Hands is hitting a bit harder there in the far east. And looks like Stefan was not quite expecting that one. Could lay down some mines here to make it harder for Stefan to get back his own fuel point. Up here, Kant's being pushed back by an awful lot of full spenders, including some with the Sturmgewehr. Stefan going there for immediate tech up, time for tank command. T70s, half techs, all that on the table here. And we can see Jason is going for the light infantry gun. Probably in response to the machine gun in the center. But obviously, he's doing, doing good job again. He sort of avoided the Stalingrad moment. That is, he's not just pouring in troops here. He's hitting the rest of the map that way, enveloping and surrounding his resources. Denying him resources. So that's pretty good there by Jason. Good tactical shift there and strategically as well. Light infantry gun can then be used to bring up there. In that sense, he's sort of following a well, storm to the dot. And there's, you know, any sort of harder point of assistance you ignore until you can bring up elements that can actually deal with it. So, in that regard, you know, he's sort of handling things quite well. Though, of course, he needs to bring up some anti tank, otherwise, the T70 is going to do quite a number here in Jazz Hands. But again, tactically and strategically, his approach so far to dealing with the heavy machine gun is very sound, and certainly to an extent, punishes Stephen PK then for just leaving it there. And particularly, always has the demo charge there, it certainly feels a bit superfluous, with an old time machine gun just being an easy target for Jazz Hands, artillery, and other elements. And we get this power drops in. So if there's any remote doubt in Jazz Hands now, he should certainly not have any more now there's an hour of drop, which is very much unique to, you know, again, when least alongside Soviet industry. But again, he doesn't have Soviet industry either chosen. So, I mean, again, there's not really much doubt here that uh, Stephen Bigger has gone for lend lease. Still good harassment there by Jazz Hands. And again, there you go. With a much more well concerted assault that pushes back the heavy machine gun, but of course there's another problem, and that is going to be the T-70 light tank. So the 45 in the gun, which as a fun fact was sort of the uh, standard gun of a lot of earlier Soviet tanks. 
Go my charge pace and so forth. Quite nicely wiped one of Jash Hansen's infantry units. An eventual explosion, shattering them. Getting up Panzer there for the Storm Hunt to help you with the T-70. Not a bad choice since he's got no other way of dealing with the T-70 until the Kenneth arrives. And even then, that's going to take some time to get down there. Push for the light in front of it. It's thwarted by the Fulsplitz and Storm Ponies. Good work there by Jazz Hands. We could up there against the Engineers. Very likely, very likely, unless uh, Stephanie has got the Devil's Own Luck and he did not. Storm Ponies could take up the in the house. MD34 to that way. Fire at the T70. Fulsplitz out in the other side of the Conscripts could push forward with a Brandhand Granate. Once caught for back here. Probably to cover the flank in case Stephanie tries to pull anything through here. He's that way secured to an extent. At least has sort of a tripwire, if you will. Contrary to taking 9 losses from the Lactus Infant Lake, it shoots a 75mm high explosive shells range through the uh, church roof and walls. But 70 KS would have managed to put it back there again after losing the Eastern Sight there to Jazz Hands. Uh, push there, heavy machine gun coming now from behind some old parked cars. Second drug up, sending a shrap hunter to course there for Jazz Hands. I kept my map towards the center, so now both players are sending on the center. Well, again, again. Chance of things becoming Stalin Gradish again when he should try to secure the rest of the map again around it, you know, instead of just pouring everything in there in the center. But there you go. T centering head again with Patrick's there opening up on the T7 doing some damage. Not quite enough. And as all this is happening, Stephen McKay, those using this as diversion, so we'll move around to secure the flanks of the map. Very good work there by Stefan. Very good work. That was also got a chance to maybe hit some more vulnerable units and deal further damage to Jazz Hands and we failed to handle it. Now go in fact he's setting up a unit there to deal with the lightest in front of the church. Very good. Stick jazz hands yet to go for Dalton here. Seems rather reluctant to do so. Seems very reluctant. There you go. Lightus in front of the ships they're engaged by conscripts. They're mostly guns taking aim on the fascist. Scheiße! Say God Otto! Uh no, I'm Otto. That was Dieter. I can't tell your part anyways. Now you're boosted. Push! Push harder, Fritz! But I'm Dieter! Ah, uh, shut up! Fortunately, they need to fall back. They're not doing too well. Come to this current territory. Again, we can see against Stephen because just basically used again this as bait to draw them in. Kind of like, you know, the Russians basically helped the Germans occupied at Stalingrad and then sort of enveloped them by hitting the weaker. A Romanian and Italian held flanks, so yeah, you know, pretty good work there by Stephanie. Again, both players sort of using the same tick on the other one. It's just Jazz Hands that suddenly forgot about the trick, fell into a Stalingrad trap, and I was just being well Stalingrad it by Stefan. More fuel drops in there. We got big take up here. moving straight here for the mechanized armor company. I think that's a really good move there by Stefan, just trying to push ahead using his structure and that way, push ahead for tanks as well. Faster and that way, pressing Jazz Hands. Really good play there by Stefan. Really good. MD34, they're keeping the Arkham Hall again. Can't last there forever. And needs to get the line for going back into pressure. And T70 falling back here with some damage suffered. Victory points wise, it's also got a tiny lead there. It's got all three of the points themselves. Again, that way, also quickly bleed up Jazz Hands if he's not careful. So only some time they won't get any armor. Still no doctrine for Jazz Hands. No indication of anything he's sort of really planning. <laughs> Second hand machine gun there covering the cutoff point for the fuel point. Very good work there by Stephen the case. He can't easily get the fuel point itself due to the scrap hands of the course and extent covering the area here. He can, you know, deny access to the fuel itself. But Jazz Hands clearly not the player to just get two folks on the center. They take back to hitting these days, giving up the center for now, which I think is a very good priority. Of course, head on assault here is not going to have the very best of results there for Jazz Hands. But in this case, still quick to split up his infantry that way, opening up for a flank there on their machine. And there you go, flashing it out with a few Banhan Granate. And the light is still being occupied elsewhere with some of the rations there. So he can he can actually right now go for the T-34 6 he wants to, but at this point he's probably so close he figures he can just go for the M4C Sherman wait a bit. No, actually he doesn't, he doesn't. 
he realizes time is of the essence, pushes for it now because again, well, it could probably wait like a minute or two for the emphasis. Show him the T34 76 now, it's going to have more of an impact and nicely put more pressure on Jazz Hands. Whereas again, this one is just going to give Jazz Hands more time to bring up some to counter the T34. So, in that regard, going for T34 is not a bad choice at all. And he's at this sort of situation we can then easily follow up with an M4 T Sherman to then support the T3476. Stream Pioneer here finding out with the counter comes lightning to go and fire there. Almost landing quite a hit there, but ultimately not quite, doesn't quite cut it. Comes there being suppressed, Fultz is going out. And we got Overwatch? Huh. You don't see that one very often. You do not see that one very often, but. There we are, Jazz Hands has gone for Overwatch. See some of the counting about like the Agile Predator looking for prey to consume. But there we go, there's a Kedna from Whiting all the time, and there you go, get some hits. They're getting close with the Panther Faust. He could knock out the T70, could knock it out. There you go, Panther Faust. Oh! And it gets abandoned, it gets abandoned. We got more faults coming up. We got a MD Fed flying back though, some up support as well here in the center. Like light into guns. He's gone for two now. He's going for a lot of two there. We got the T-54 now in the west. Whereas all the center tanks seems in the east. Actually, there's a bit up here he could move towards there, I guess. But of course he might be expecting his opponent to move all towards here to respond. So of course bring up all the under tank here would not be a bad idea either. Comes there taking heavy head damage there for the Fulton. These can't quite secure the T-70. He could salvage it though. He would actually try and salvage it, get some extra fuel out. But now it's already too late. We got the T-34 and 6 arriving here to dominate the field for the motherland. MD-34 setting up. Still on path going down here to get like Kevin for down there as well. T-34 very aggressively rolling about. And there you go. Good hit on the rear of the Kedna for Pat. So straight from the storm pine, he's getting another hit. Could probably get another kind of hit. There you go. Almost got the T-34-6. It's going to be a big loss for Stephanie. Loses it. If he loses it. And gets away with a tiny slip of health there. Tiny. Really lucky there for Stephanie. They're really lucky. T-7 recruit. That probably just denies his opponent more than anything. Comes being pinned down and suppressed. The storm pine is doing what it can there. And there you go, to jump Pani's finish off what the kid never couldn't finish. Jazz yes, in a bit of a weak spot here overall, but again, not putting weight, you know, resources pointing into the center, but again, hitting these sides. But again, all the resources are, and it's resources he needs. But again, stalling the victory point bleed is not a bad idea either, but you know, there's also better ways to do that, like for some hitting the sides. So there you go, Emphasis Sherman out here. Jazz and still lacking any tanks to really take it on. Could go for Yak Panzer here. Of course, it might be safe for long term to just go for a Panther, so that way challenge the T-34 and Pussy Shermans a lot better. But of course, that's going to at least be a few more minutes before we get out of Panther, so it's not without its risks either. But so far, again, he's predicting Stephen BK's movements quite well. Again, expecting him to land through the armor and has all of his anti-tank assets then ready to deal with it. Quickly doing a lot of damage to the m Sherman. Almost wrapped the Storm Pioneers there, but the Emphasis is showing his low on health. Continues onwards, he almost getting the Storm Pioneers. Good hit there. Need to get some Fulton to block away. In the west, we're going to push up here, but being pinged down by the heavy machine. But we got the light infantry on there supporting. The light is in front, so like a shots. And the center, another one there trying to blast out the heavy machine. While the Fulton just draw fire. The Super Contingency in east, though, really wants to wipe those Storm Pioneers with the Panzer Strike. Gas and going for a Panzer 4. Panzer Kampf Wagen here. Just continues there. He really, really wants them dead. Taking this from the two centimeter flax. And finally gets his two on pioneers. Finally. Took him quite a bit there. And just as anything gets out, there you go. Pantherfast on the M4C. But one more Pantherfast and will go down. It will go down there. Go quickly exiting the house, getting up close. Johannes gets the Panther Faust and he knocks out the M4C Sherman, leaving it a smoking, burning hulk of scrap steel. Folks are being overwhelmed by Russian infantry, need to fall back. And the machine can continue to endure German artillery. 
But there you go, Jazz has got his Panther IV out here. Technically, the Fed and Hollywood not have had any Panther IVs. Had, I think, Panthers and some Yak Panthers, but no Panther IVs. Of course, there were other Panther divisions. There was also Hungarian armored elements, which actually used Panther IVs. But they also used some of their own indigenous designs, so they weren't quite, I think, in some cases, on the level of the German armor. But they used Panther IVs. They even used a few Panthers and Tiger tanks. Aircraft shot down this time around, though. No luck for the Soviet Air Force. More Sturm Pioneers of Jazz Hands to help repair his tanks. Good job here. T 34 moving up, trying to get that Panther IV. We got into tanks, and we got Panther Plus. They're ready to dispatch the T 34 if it gets too uh, confident there. Still nice to see a fight here on Iron Checkpoint that just, just devolved them into both, trying to grind down the other over the center, but actually trying to maneuver hitting the points here and there. So, some good play from both players on Arnhem Checkpoint. Good play. Up here, troops healing reinforcing. We got Sturm Pioneer on the way for Jazz Hands. Lighters in front of shoots. They're bombarding the unfortunate country there in the center, slaughtering them with high explosive firepower. Times of four in dying it repairs, but the Sturm Pioneers will take a bit of time to arrive to repair. Found fat about the fighting in Hungary, but the Germans did not trust the Hungarian high command, which actually sought them on basis of boarding and eliminating all Hungarian units to German command, leaving technically a Hungarian high command with no real command or anything, which really left the Hungarians pretty cross about the entire situation. The Hungarian army at that point, though, was a bit of a mix of the reservist units, police units, and some decent quality units, but also just conscripts and training units. It was sort of a real mix and a bunch of sort of pretty good units were formed into a sort of elite unit known as the St. Laszlo Division which combined paratroopers which were pretty good with some armored elements and the likes. A little fun fact there. Would have been neat if they actually given the Germans who have come to have some, you know, Hungarian doctrine. They could have given the Russians a Romanian one because by 1944, sort of late, they were basically sort of finding with the Russians having surrendered a bit earlier. Keep it rolling straight for the Panzer IV, bit risky here. I can have been suppressed, laying down mine. There we go, several hits here. I can have for the about to hit the bike if he's not careful. Panzer IV moving down. Veterans won game for the Panzer come back in field. We also got a field gun up here by the way now. Four, seven BK. Ooh, the Panzer IV could lost, there we go. Let's quick, T-Fed for trying to ram it. Oh, catch knocked out though, and the Panzer IV barely escapes the field gun, hitting a fence instead. I said, in defense of Mother Russia, not shoot the fence, you idiot. Engineer step being pushed out. Hey, machine gun fire there, threatening to wipe them out. And now with the machine gun there pushed out, the center is advancing here. Good work by Stefan. Might have even been wiped out. Hard to say that. The double light infantry gun certainly having a pressure element there on uh, Stefan BK. Continuously and monotonously raining down death. Fuel cash by here for Stefan showing resources of the sort of higher order there in the longer term against Yas. Definitely not a bad idea, definitely not a bad idea at all. They need to build up an armament reserve and then try to make for a really big push against uh, Jazz Hands running. You're making these smaller commitments in there, which Jazz Hands can more easily, you know, lock down. Also, like Jazz Hands, they have a chance of building up his own armor force, and that way, sort of really getting aggressive there versus Stefan. But there you go, another M4C Sherman out here for him. Another one. Victory Port is secured, grabbing up on the western side as well. Field gun repositioning with the hay machine, and up there will deal with it. Center slowly being grabbed here by the German army. As the Feldhandhalle relentlessly advances. Sherman comes from westwards there. Yes, the Romanians surrendered to the Soviets. They basically were forced to hand over some of their army to Soviet command. The rest were basically disbanded and probably sent to labor camps and the likes. Not exactly something nice happening there. And we're basically used to do very uh, brutally by the rations. He's pushing forward here, then again, the Germans also pretty much did the same thing with a lot of the Hungarian troops. So, you know, not much of a difference there between the two sides at that point. T-34 
Kill coming up. They're going to try and hit the Schwer Panzer quarters. A bit risky this in as well. But there we go. We've got a tank got infantry up there as well. It's now a big engagement there by Stephen McKee to try and silence the opponent there. But there you go. Moving. Could he have to try and use sector assault to maybe that way break up his opponent's attack? Machine gun net almost lost. Now we're crude. Panzer 4 falling back here. Continue fighting in the center and a bit of pressure in the east. There's a lot going on here across the map here between these two players. Nice use of Arnhem checkpoint by there you go. Tries to regain the initiative here against it. Flares going off and we got it. We actually got sector assault here. The Luftwaffe is being sent in to support the Feldhandhalle. First I believe that's in the reconnaissance one. There's basically a mix of strafing runs, bombing runs and reconnaissance runs and new sector assault. Almost got the field and crew machine gun being pinned down. Bomber going in there. Well, he's first lining up for a hit there. Kenneth moving down. Panther 4 moving down. He's got other elements that are retreating. There you go. Lots of bombs being thrown down the orchard. Ah, oh, almost hit something. Just a complete mess there. Panther 4 gaining better two of us. Sherman needs to be coming up to push too far ahead there. Sherman hits a tractor instead. And there we go. Sherman gets lit on fire here by the Panther 4. Brewed up. So that was not a good engagement again. Stefan VK might want to try and build up a small armor reserve, at least be a bit more careful with his armor. Either way, fortunately, could clear up the machine gun. We've got another one coming up here. Panther 4 we need to deal with that one, though. Bomber lining up here for another hit. And there you go. <laughs> Almost hitting its own men. Vansin. Either way. Grab the eastern fuel point here. It's definitely getting a slightly more awkward situation. I versus Jazz Hands would actually aim for a panther. He's got a lot of manpower, so some Obsland wouldn't be a bad choice either there for Jazz Hands. And he actually needs to pull back the Panther 4. He's actually in a high risk situation here for the field gun to get a good hit there if he's not careful. And the far east in Genesia versus Fultz Grenadiers. You would actually consider a mechanized assault group that was just away for some gas, but that way more challenge the German infantry. There you go. Jazz Hands. Not going for a panther now. He could have gone for it, but he's just aiming for another panther 4 now. I mean, that is an option as well. Pulling up with another MD-34, but he could add another panther up much sooner. So, and it just feels a bit silly when you're setting up for a, at least what looks to be setting up for a panther, and then you just go for another panther 4. And now he's merging conscripts with the field gun just strengthen that one, while then uses the depleted conscript squad to ahead. So he really wants to silence that Shvair panther at quarters. Another flare off from... Fuel point and there you go. Now they attempt to hit silencing the Schwer Panzer quarters. Now they attempt here, but we got Fultzwitz dug in by the fuel point. Sandbags laid down, ready to hold off against any Marxists. Got the MP4 covering the corner house there. And the second Panzer 4 there arrives for Jazz Hands and the Feltan Halle. Reinforcing. Shots fired. And there you go. Fox is pushing against the conscript. Pantheon from the other side. No pin map machine gun they added to it. He could, you know, consider that. I mean, he's got on the first one. Quick retreat for the church here, but they need to continue onwards. Oh, so they're not going to last long. And there we go, swiftly exiting out there through the rear. Comes up in a very, very thin house. Easily a target there for the Panther 4. And there you go, field gun shoots, but bounces off the Panther, Panther Force front Lama. Stefan there following up with another field gun. This slightly uh, overly aggressive armor tactics is now uh, left in a situation where his opponent has more armor than him. So there certainly needs to be some uh, tactical change there for Stefan BK, so we're trying, you know. Stall on so can build up sufficient armored uh, mass to that way try and break jazz hands. His only benefit right now is the jazz hands are splitting up his tanks and not really gaining a lot of sort of concentrated armored mass, which means his attacks isn't necessarily too dangerous. But also, there's more like just being able to catch one of the tanks isolated and that way destroy it. There's two pounds of force working together, it's a much more uh, threatening endeavor there. Full Stephen BK's anti tank guns. There you go, Max being oh, Disco there being flanked. Constantly engaged with the Panzer 4. Here's still no pin up machine, and there you go, another m 4 East Sherman up for Stefan. He just keeps calling them in, doesn't he? 
Fugan opening up the Panther Fort, doing some nasty damage. Machine gun wiped. Field gun landing another excellent hit there. Second field have to do with the other Panther Fort here. Penetrating hit, then he's got the first one support. Now uh, Sharon pursuing the Panther Fort. There you go. Good hit. Almost guarded, almost guarded. Other Panther one a bit of trouble there. Third Panther one though for Jazz Sands, but he could risk losing some of them. And there you go. One Panther Fort down, one Panther Fort. Good work here. Jazz Hands getting too overconfident with his armored fist and is rather using it uh, well not very sensibly making it again easier for Stefan BK to then just deal with the tank separately and that means you know overall it's a lot easier for Stefan and that gives him much better chance of actually getting back into the game here so tactical mistake there by Jazz Hands rather than handing himself well tactically but again with his armor uh, rather committed a bit of a fall in fact he's cancelled the Panzer Four there Going for Orbital Darden to replace some of his infantry losses might also be setting up for a Panther instead. Which might necessitate besides field guns, maybe an issue to file there for Stephen McKay, but of course we'll also just go for more infantry Shermans. And he's also crew as much as he can at the end of the fort disc there. Just grab whatever he can from Jazz Hands and turn it against him. And of course more flares here. Keeping uh, Jazz Hands uh, very much in touch with what Stephen McKay is doing as he advances. Almost got Orbital done there. Noting we have not seen any Goliaths from Gas and beyond that, though. So, do some things here. Again, we can't see much use the passive abilities, but you know. I'm assuming they're being used to some degree. I'm assuming. Need to pull that machine gun out of there before it's too late. We seem to lose it already, and they're going for sure. They're going to lose the four. Machine. Blue gun got tragically wiped. There you go. Vegency 3 Raketmerfer. Need to get that Sherman out of there. That's not going to last much longer. And Flamethrower is there. Flashing up the machine gun crew, which rather pushed too far ahead there with no support, no screen. Become an easy tire there for Stephen BK's Flamethrower engineers. Hardened men have seen a lot of things. Things they should not have seen. And will never forget. And there you go, Panther away there for Jazz Hands and the Felt and Halifax Panther Falls right in front of both field guns. Oh dear, almost knocked out. They could lose him. We use his tracking here to get increased line of sight. They could get it. Oh, he still got it. But Stephen BK could lose his German in return, which means any armored gain there or you know, advantage is immediately lost on the spot. Again, Stephen BK needs to work on his armored tactics and armor preservation. He's Handling it like he's playing conscripts is a lot easier to get out of there, and of course, also a lot more expendable compared to the Sherman tanks, which are notably more expensive than a conscript board. So, needs to work a bit on that. They obviously have not been upgraded here, taking a lot of fire there from the Russians. There, go up, seeing it brought up, and then cancelled. Oh, he's going for another one. He's going for another sector assault. Two sector assaults in one match. Hello. Panther rhyming as well. First, we've got the reconnaissance run here from Jazz Hands. Stand the case, like the repositioning. Two's being suppressed, pinned down. There you go, bombs being dropped all over the center. I'm not entirely sure how effective they are. Mostly, it's the bit that's doing the strafing that's so far seen the most effective here versus Stefan's forces. But there you go, Panther arrives. Panzer come for Wagen 5. Need some infantry support the fight. Jazz hands need support. Remember, it's a panther. Needs to work with other elements. Combined arms and all that. More bombs being dropped there. On the right flat flank, you got a cannon for those heavy machine guns. That's not really a job for a cannon member, to be honest. Obviously, I'm being slowly brought into fighting shape again. What will Stephen BK aim for another Sherman? Go for more fuel cash. It's T Fed Force issued five, it's hard to say. But there you go, Panther still behind the support there. Sending that hey machine gun crew running far, far away. Oh, more bombs just being dropped. Being quite liberal there with the bombs. Being quite liberal with them. I mean, if Stefan had a much more dense defense around the center, that would probably been uh, a lot more useful with those bombing drops there. But uh, ultimately, I'm not entirely sure if he did any damage with it. Besides, again, just a straight force, just you know, doing some damage there. Double lightning guns, they're firing away. 
Sam Kelch got double field and says, well, Panther all falling back. Presenting the front body towards the enemy, that is very good. Panther commanders were always instructed to keep the front towards the enemy, since that was pretty much the hardest point. Double field gun barrage, that's a deal with the front, just regular one, single. John Pines was constantly in the far east. In the west, we got fighting there as well. Folks, there's a machine gun there. Looks like Stephanie's sending up for another Sherman tank here. In the far east, there, took dealing with the Russians they're sneaking about. Orbs under the alert machine gun there, finally. And there he goes, Stefan going for another M4C Sherman. Fun fact, of course, received a lot of things from uh, the lend program, but one thing that perhaps doesn't get talked so much about is actually got a lot of aluminum. And you might ask, well, why is that important? Because the T-34 engine was made of aluminum, by which was really expensive and rather sort of can't, slightly comes the whole idea. It's actually a really cheap tank, but besides that, the Soviet Union got most of this aluminum from the Ukraine, so when they lost that to the Germans, they also lost a vast majority of the aluminum, which meaning they actually had to rely very much on the Western Allies to provide them with the aluminum for the tanks. So, had they not received that, they would not have been able to make all those T-34s. It's a little fun fact there. Then a good hit on the m 4 from the front machine gun there, wiping out the field gun crew. Panther presenting himself as a nice fat threat there to Stephen BK. We can see Jazz and stuck around several of the points. He should consider maybe using his orbs gun when he can't, you know, lay down uh, booba traps on the points. That way, making it harder for Stephen BK to just rush them and sort of try and get them back. Sandbox would be helpful. There we go. Push towards the east. Feel good thing to be with the Panther. Need to be careful that one. Needs more infantry. A lot to me to try and attack for the village or town centre. Attack from here and then flank behind Stephen BK's assault here. But, uh, looks like here the front is already collapsing, so I doubt that's going to be viable. Just because there's nothing to keep Stephen's attention fixed here as he then sort of moves up through there. He just needs to go. Oh dear, he lost his veterans. He feels like in there for leaving him snub with only a Panther deal with the enemy tanks. That's going to give Stephen BK a bit more relief in particular because it increases his anti-tank weapons to flee. Still, keeping the front towards the enemy anti-tank guns, very good, very good. Some players just allow the tanks to do 180 degree, turn making it a lot easier for the anti-tank weapon to you know, damage and even knock out the Panther. So, good response there by Jazz Hands, good response. Panther 4 there on the way for him. Could save up for another Panther, but I think it just the Panther 4 now is going to be a bit faster and able to support the Panther, so that is, I think, the best idea. They could also go for the Yak Panzer, though. But he probably wants to help deal with infantry more specifically as well. Oh dear, that's a mistake there by the Panther moving too far hit right to the field guns. Ooh, got a bit lucky there. But still, that was pretty risky there by uh, Gas Hands. That was pretty risky. So in the Sherman in after the Panther that is even more reckless by Stefan now. He could have lost it there, he wasn't careful. Field comes in hot pursuit, Panther trying to get away, but can it escape? He's got no infantry need to support. It's actually moved over his light infantry guns, and there you go. They got for the fatherland. Allowing the light infantry gun sector sprint out of there, but he loses Vetsy 4 1. Also, last machine gun quickly moved over. The problem is, he's not attack moving it with it, meaning it's just me moving over there. So, a bit of a um, not too good move there by Stefan, costing him his light infantry gun. And the machine gun was able to do anything either. And certainly, it's almost under forgotten, so they weren't able to get much of the bonus there either to quickly get forwards there. But basically, it's sort of a faster movement speed. Not quite a fake full sprint, but just still faster movement alongside some other bonuses. So, it can be useful there. But in this case, though, Gas Hands just didn't quite get it fully to work. And he could risk losing his Panther 4 if he's not careful. Enemy 
hard work happening there in the pants that third field gun from Stefan third field gun he's really taking the art threat of gas man seriously oh she would not be going for like a lot of field guns and I get there for you stone from the enemy Right then, Panther back in action for the Fatherland. Sherman in hot pursuit there. We got the officer in there coming from some of the ruins, but they uh, quickly found themselves the uh, center of attention there of the Russian tank crew. Time needs to cover around the Panther. Something we're not getting any for full supporting as well. 92 versus 98 victory points gonna get closer between the two players gonna get close Ken was creeping up the machine gun moving in light infantry gun fire they're running down of course we also got Stephen BK's light infantry gun range support as well if need be oh, successfully pushed back the Ken over here I think he just should deploy a blend curb to block the line of fire of the hay machine gun they decide not to apparently I think you should just do it. Make it harder for the Russian cruisers to suppress them. Minimize incoming damage as well. Still, he gets a victory point on the fight. We also got the other one being secured there by the Fultzers. They are also getting suppressed and they don't have access to smoke. Well, Stephen can soon go for another Sherman. And there you go, Panther will work on these, but immediately encounter the field gun immediately takes some penetrating hit there to the front, leaving it damaged and it repairs again. Jasan could consider the larger armored assault is sweeping through here and then sort of that way striking up behind his opponent and that way dealing with it there. That could be an option there for Jasan to consider versus Stephen McKay. Still, he's bleeding out Stefan there down to 66 points. 63. More flares. Panzer 4 fixed up. Panther just seemingly doing nothing there. Using his machine gun bank, which is the most efficient maneuver. He's trying to actually see out and destroy whatever Stefan's got on the field. But it's too late, of course, not committing to two reckless assaults. But also noting here, Stephen Hack dispatching forces up the west side to that way, grab territory. Who could also maybe just rush out at half to that way, rush up the point to catch some units off guard. Could have given perhaps Stephen there a bit more oomph for a free fire. Filling up with a T 4476, almost got ready there. We got the Panther sent along the side of Ken, who comes he's pushing forwards. Sherman almost knocked out here in the east. We got the Panther pushing forwards, getting some kill teams. Jump is joining in as well. Heavy engagement between both players. Almost on there, sweeping through the engines in the center. There we go, wiping them up. Machine guns, heavy machine. Field guns, they're being knocked out. Almost got the Sherman there as well. Quite disastrous here for Stephen Piquet in the center. Quite disastrous in the side here as well. Jump has been pinned down. Murder, we got the Panther the breaking through as well. Field gun not quite angling in the right direction. Also, I'm being suppressed here to get the Panther up to deal with it. Panther turning around to deal with it. Panther ball flanking behind and gonna try and hit the anti tank weapons. Another Panther ball over Jazz Hands. Calling in Sector Assault as well here. In the midst of everything, trying to take for more chaos. Carnage making it hard here for Stephen Piquet to stand his ground versus the enemy armor. Good idea there, good idea. Of course, again, it's going to take some time before it can sort of arrive to any support, but still, better than nothing, I suppose. Need to keep the Panther's armor towards the enemy, though. He's actually exposed in the rear there. Need to blitz, reposition, blitz, blitz. Mechie 2 there. And there you go, bombing run against the enemy anti tank weapons. There you go, gets a field gun, almost gets the kidnap as well. Going back the Panther there. Need to get it to safety there. In the center, we got troops pushing forward. We got Russians charging back. Not peer troops even enforcing almost. Yeah, we go another Panther for ready here for Jazz Hands. Stead Piquet, they're close to another M4C Sherman. In the center, the T 34 secures the ground and the day. Panther, ready to 33 versus 80 victory points here. Just need to kill the eastern one there and you know use his armor to make it that way crash Stefan but uh, still looks like Stefan might have a few chances here to get back in the fight further. 
Of course, Jazz Hands now enjoys a definite armored advantage. Two Panther Force, and of course, a Veteran T2 Panther with its shirts and added. Making for a formidable armored war machine. The Kenworth Cribbing Head, he's looking for the damaged Panther. Troops being rushed to these, he knows that next, when the next strike is going to happen, he's laying down sandbags. There you go, cancelled. Getting some strap in the West TV. Got constantly being held back by folks on the Discord. Orbison wiping out like Kenworth. Good work here. Needs support here in the center by the Eastern Victory Point. Needs support. Schnell. They might want to look for any support ones that way. Rash the point here with the tanks themselves. And then we've got the Orbison afterwards. There you go. Something right there. Panther setting up. Panther all flanking up behind here against Seth BK. Center precision. Very good there by Jazz Hands. Very good. Panther moving up through here. It might, looks like he's going to attack the center actually. Orbison flanking up. But there's still the machine in there to be wary of. And there you go. Panther takes a shot. But it pan oh, deflects it off there. Panther going for the tank here in the center alongside the Panther 4. Getting behind the center, but there you go, hits a mine, hits a mine. Pretty catastrophic, needs to get the obs on down here, deal with it. Suppressed, they're suppressed, not enough in support. Steel Empire should be occupied with the Panzer IV. He's gonna lose the Panther. Ah, oh, Jess Hands, infantry support. Also, less ambitious goals, I think. Panzer IV will ring up for the center here, but that Panther's gonna go down. It's flanked here by the Sherman. There you go, Panther down. The Panther down. And he just cleared out that field gun first. That Panther would have probably lived. 50 points left here. Panther 14 with things there. Barely need to left there for Jazz and there you go. Gets the Sherman. Constantly pushed back here. Not a lot left there for Stefan, but now there is for Jazz hands. Oh no, he's got a lot more tanks, so that's a dead line. But there you go. One Panther 4 more down. Hey, machine with crew wipe, Graham Neeson victory point, 33 versus 44 points. Troops seem to be forcing me, got another supply drop in. He's got moving the Panther 4 here, they're for the fuel cash. Gas hands pushing it as far as he can, he's getting very, very aggressive here in the closing moments of the match. Got the field gun. Light infantry gun crew wiped. 30 points left now. Clock is taking against Stefan once more. No needed armor here in sight. Panzer IV is eventually two bar away, making that much more lethal for at least recruiting machine gun. Just try. Oh, wiped! Field recruit as well. From center point, rendered neutral as well. 24 points left. It's going to really tick fast down again. Stefan now, light infantry gun trying to silence here. Could try and bounce, but there you go. Stephen BK realizes the fight is over and surrenders. A loss here for the second guards, mechanized core victory for the Felton Halle and Jazz Hands. A brutal fight here, but also with some good tactical maneuvering for both sides. The problem, although, for Osten was just his armor tactics, more specifically, his armor preservation was not very good, causing him to never really build up a large number of tanks, which is really important for the Soviets. You know, they need several tanks to really have a chance, but he never really got that number, making it much easier for Jazz Hands that way, contain him and deal with them. But also props to both players. They need two folks in the center there. Remember, there's other sides of the map that way. Trying to I mean, we even flank occasionally the other player through there. That's really good there. That's great to see from both players in the map. So again, thumbs up there. But again, Stephen McKay needs to work a bit on his armor preservation. Could have maybe snuck in a half to there for some more elite influence and mobility, some reinforcement there. I think that could have helped Stephen McKay maybe. As for Jazz Hands, also in some times we got a bit too confident. Could maybe use some uh, for the fun a bit more. Maybe some. Uh, Booba traps from his orbital arm. But as you know, well played there by Jazz Hands. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, one subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay and a prank some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Lynching Cheese. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you all tomorrow for another stunning episode. Bye.